here. And we're live. All right. And three, two, one. Welcome to Real Hospitality Live. Today I have a very special guest, Mr. Brandon Steiner. Brandon is a American business icon with a background that maybe many people don't know is uh, started out in hospitality, but as come along to be, be including as an author, a keynote speaker, and you bought this little place in New York, right, called Yankee Stadium? Well, I had an opportunity to partner with the Yankees on that. That was great. We took it apart, sold it piece by piece. Yeah, it was great. Fantastic. Hey, you know what? Thanks so much for doing this. I mean, our original conversation that we had earlier this year was uh, we reached out to each other and had a chat about hospitality, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. And we talked about, I guess it was a video that I had posted up about uh, service training. And, uh, and we kind of just took it from there that we should do a show about it. Uh, how I are think that? so. I, I think in, in today's age, I mean, listen, everything is now online and, you know, service is like a dying breed, you know, taking care of people and, and serving people is such an important element in every sale. And, you know, listen, as a restaurant manager and owner, it's hard, you know, to keep amping up your people because, you know, people can wear you down, but it's the essence of every restaurant is whether you want to serve people and solve and, and service and take care of people with love and compassion, which is what makes the restaurant business, in my mind, a business that should go on forever and ever, regardless of whether retail is going to be up, down, Amazon, whatever. I still think people want to go and get a break, forget about their worries, leave that in the parking lot and experience uh, and, and have some fun and, and be taken care of. And that's my view on, on, on hospitality is, is, is that it should be a wow every time you go into a place, regardless. It should be, as, as an owner and as a restaurateur, you want to create some kind of wow, somehow between a theme, something special with the food, something special that you've made, something special you've bought, something special with the decor. But again, just on a quick basic uh, philosophy about the business is I, I think there's three most important things in any restaurant before you get to that. And that's, you know, sound, lighting, temperature. So, you know, you got to have those three things covered. You want to talk about customer service? I don't care how nice you are. If it's too cold or hot in a restaurant, you can't see, you can't read the menu. Those are three important things. Yeah. Critical. You must be able to have good lighting, good temperature you know, critical, the sound is critical. You know, it's too loud, it's noisy in here. Can't believe any restaurants I don't go back to because the music's just too loud or because the echoing in a room is too loud. I think this, the other underlying tone of all that, that's just a basic principle. You don't need to have $10 million renovation of your restaurant, but the lighting, sound and temperature need to be good. And you must have product knowledge and you must be in agreement. So. A lot of times servers, though, yes, you to death. And when the chef is telling you how something's made or what we're trying to do, but you must ask your servers and your, your bus people, not only do they understand, but do they agree? So product knowledge, you know, knowledge is so important that, they, that everybody not only know what you're trying to create, what you're making and what type of experience you're trying to have, you know, from four star to two star to one star to a theme restaurant. What what are we trying to do for people so when they walk out of here? It's a clear and clean message and you're not lacking knowledge. And then, you know, customer, um, you know, customer requests. We're living in a business now where nobody cares. Nobody wants to deviate because it's X, Y, Z. Click here, fill out here. I mean, I'm talking to my banker the other day, like, Oh, no, no, no. Click here. Fill this out. Doesn't even want to talk to me. Mm. It's amazing, you know, how efficient we are, but then how distant we are now. Right. I, I go to a restaurant. I don't want that. I want that, you know, I, when I ask for no salt or sauce on the side or no olives, these are requests that are very important to me. It's the reason why I'm going to a restaurant to get it the way I want it, because most of the time at home, it is what it is. 
Right. So when I go out and spending my hard earned money, even whether you can or can't do it, how your service responds to those requests are critical. Yeah. So those are just my basic principles before I get into the, and if you're with us on this conversation, I'm going to get into the money part of it. Because there's it. nothing better than the money grab and upselling and how you get your customers to spend more money, come back more often. But if you don't have these basic principles, in my view, I'm not sure what you're doing uh, as far as your, your place will be closed probably between six to eight months. And, and to give some perspective to this conversation as well, so that people wonder why I'm having this conversation with Brandon Steiner about restaurants. I mean, you started with the Hyatt in Baltimore. You had the-, the Hard Rock, Hard, Hard Rock in New York. Opened the first Hard Rock other than the one in LA with Isaac Tiger back in 1984. Got my formal training from Hyatt and worked in many kitchens as a child all the way up through college cooking, you know, so I worked both sides as a manager, as a waiter, busboy, yep. dishwasher. I, I was, a, when I managed my restaurant, also, I paid a lot of attention to the busboy. I paid a lot of attention to the dishwasher, mainly because if they didn't show up, th those would be the jobs I'd be doing. Right. But the dishwasher can tell you a lot of things. Like they can show you that foods come back and that people aren't happy. Right. They can say, show you that something maybe was wrong because of the way somebody approached the meal and the way they got all this food back or that kind of thing. Yep. Um, the bus boy can be in a tremendous asset if you're in line with them in communication. I look at the bus boy or the bus woman almost as like the catcher in baseball. Right. They really set the tone. They're the ones that are really doing all the little things. They're the one that catches the person who's not happy because they need ketchup or that something's cold or something's not right. And if they're on their game, you're on your way to extraordinary service. And, and a lot of times that bus person gets overlooked because right. they're a simple hire, minimum wage, but a good server and a good manager knows how important that bus per person is. And they're helping you turn your tables faster too. Absolutely. It's, it's funny that you say that because I have my, my philosophy with, with uh, busers has always been, and I was a, I was a bus boy too. So I started out in this business it, it is to always look after them. And they and because they don't get recognized very often, they if you slip them a twenty dollar bill, man, they're your best friend forever. And they will yeah. watch your section and they will make yeah. sure that every piston and, runs on time. And turn your table faster. Oh yeah, you bet. And how frustrating is when your whole table gets a meal and you're missing the hot sauce, the ketchup, or a fork or a knife, and you gotta wait and all of a sudden the waiter disappears, do something else, but that bus person, boom. That's just Gives waiting the for the next water. note in the yeah. symphony, right? I mean, it's you're, you're missing that one beat, and if they're there to help And it's you. hard on a manager. I, I try to tell like, leadership, don't, you know, don't count on the management and the head chef to supply all the leadership in your restaurant. Yeah. These are the things that a, 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 a server, a host can supply leadership to keep everybody motivated on the same page. And that's how you get an extraordinary working environment and a place that people want to go back to. For sure. For sure. Oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted your flow, Brandon. <laughs> I, I was just saying, like, you know, it's, I built Steiner, 32 years, Steiner Sports, a, a huge uh, sports marketing collectible company. And now I've started a new company called uh, Collectible Exchange and the Steiner Agency. The Collectible Exchange is like a stub up for collectibles. And the Steiner Agency just markets athletes for endorsements, speaking engagements, stuff like that. What's cool about the exchange is that people can buy and sell stuff on there. Oh, that's and cool. then we help authenticate and we can also help you evaluate what you have. Right. But it's interesting how much I've learned from the restaurant business, how powerful a tool the restaurant business was in me helping build all these other businesses I've done in the last 30 years. And, 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 and it, there's no shortcuts in the restaurant business, um, you know, as far as the knowledge you need to have. And you can't hire computers and robots to go and take care of people and to show them love and compassion and, you, and show them that you're there to take care of them. And that customer service has been a driving force behind my businesses. Uh, every day, all day. And, I, and we've always been not, a, we don't have a customer service department. We have a customer service company. Right. And you must dwell on, I, I always dwell that my restaurants that every person needs to find the eyesight of every customer to make sure that they're good. Because all you do is you get two people a day walk out of your restaurant not feeling good, 14 a week, 56 a month. Before you know it, you got six, 700 people a year walking out unhappy. And you say, so that's not a big deal. But you know how many people you know. The average person knows about 250 people. 
That's and you start to, and you know when you have a bad restaurant experience, what you do, you tell everybody you know. Tell everybody. You become a right. restaurant consultant, and you want to tell the world how bad a place is. And if something's great, you're, you're equally as excited. Bad technology. So when you start, do, that when you start doing work. the math, how many times did somebody come to you and say, you know, this restaurant sucks? Did you ever go? No, but I heard from somebody who told me it was really bad. Yeah. How often do you hear that? So when you hear about that multiple, I call it Brandon's Law of 250. When you start getting into the multiples of people, just from a few people walking out unhappy, and then they tell 250 people, they tell 250, you see why restaurants go out of business in six to eight months. Mm -hmm. So you never want to let anyone walk out without trying to resolve, make right, fix, invite back. It's, it's part of the deal. You're going to have problems. And things are just not going to work out. It's not, that's not the problem. The problem in a restaurant is not the problems you have, the food maybe being a little off, the service maybe not quite right. It's whether you want to accept it or not, and whether, you let, whether you're willing to let somebody walk out of your operation feeling bad. Like to me, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to have an unhappy customer on the street, even still to this day. I'm, I'm not willing to have it. I, I won't accept it. Now, so I'm going to do everything I can to turn that person around. And what ends up happening is, that becomes my biggest fan. So it's an investment and that a person becomes an advertiser. So yeah, did I waste, I brought that person back for dinner for two or I gave him a couple of free products, but that's like advertising because now they go, you know, can you believe this guy? That meal sucked. They invite me back it was one of the greatest meals. That's a great place. I love the way they responded to me on that because they knew they dropped the ball. The thing that I've made the most amount of money on uh, the concept and uh it hit me back in my Hyatt days when I put this together. And I remember Hyatt Baltimore was not going to be a successful restaurant. And I talk a lot about this in my You Gotta Have Balls book. Right. Uh, you, can get, you can find out about all the books on brandonsteiner.com. But if you remember anything I'm going to tell you here, I remember this. This is a concept that you can make a lot of money off of. Uh, it's something I've given a lot of thought about. And I don't know if there's a restaurant manager that should not be thinking like this and definitely not a server. First of all, the underlying theory is most servers, if you ask them how much money they make, they'll tell you they make $200 a shift, $150 a shift. If, I ask, if you ask me how much I would make, I would tell you probably what I made in a year. So already you see the small time thinking yeah. and the short thinking, which is immediately small time thinking will always get you small time results. Now, when a customer walks into your establishment in any business, especially the restaurant business, we are all very psychologically insecure. We're all very nervous. We don't know what we're expecting. Is Am I gonna like this? Am I not? Am I gonna order the right thing? So there is a lot of insecurities when anybody's about to purchase anything. The nicer the restaurant, the more insecurities because you're spending more money, you buy a car, am I buying the right car, whatever it is. So this whole concept is based on a person's serious psychological insecurities and inability to make a decision. Most of us as children don't get to make a lot of decisions. Our parents make most of them for us. We go to a restaurant, our parents tell us what to order, what to eat, what they think we'll like and everything else. We don't go over the menu. Then we become adults, we'll get at the menu, we have no idea what to do. <laughs> Am I wrong? I mean, right? You're, you're so absolutely right. this concept that I've made millions of dollars off is a very simple and it's not based on selling. It's based on serving and solving. So stop selling and start serving and solving. It's based on the three R's, recommendation, recognition, and reassurance. So the first thing is recommendation. Never give a recommendation uh, because it's the most expensive item of this and that. You give a recommendation from your heart and based on the sense you have for what you think the people would like. You just, if you walked into my store, you walked into my, I'd say, before you do anything, I just wanna tell you the best deal in the place. So if someone say, came to my restaurant and said, listen, I'm not sure what you want to eat, but I want to make a recommendation because I want to tell you the best item that we've ever had in this restaurant. If you want to order it, fine. I, I hate for you to leave and me not tell you about it because this is my favorite dish. And it's the best dish. Now, that's from the heart. And that's a recommendation. And it's important to do that in, in, in an authentic way. And if you can make a couple of them, that's great. Now, there's a couple of ways to dig down a little deeper, but I think it's great when you meet somebody for the first time in a sales situation. Now, you're the customer, you're dealing with a server, and right away, they're giving of themselves a, a, an idea of something that they think that would be really genuinely good for them. That's already creating a nice vibe. 
The second most important thing is recognition. You must recognize who's sitting at your table, why they're there. Is the blood, is the sugar level low? Are they there for a business meeting? Are they there as a family get together? Recognize who's there, why they're there. The recognition factor. Not that you got a big party, you're getting an automatic tip, but why are they there? What's the experience? There are many times I go in a restaurant, I don't want anybody to bother me. I'm having a serious meeting. And the least you leave me alone, the better the service is going to be. And then there are times I'm with my little kids, I'm with, and I need a lot of service, I need a lot of attention. A great server recognizes and uses recognition to their advantage. And the third most important thing is you've given your recommendation and you recognize who they are. You must go back because people are idiots and they forget what you've given them. You told them to order this amazing item. It ended up being amazing because there's nothing on the plate left. You must reassure them that what they did was good. Right. Mr. Steiner, did you really like that chicken dish I recommended? Because it looked like you really enjoyed it. Now you reminded them that not only did they get something that you recommended and that it was good because people forget, but they'll be very, very, very quick to complain. Well, yeah. If you know, oh, I don't like this. So you got to remind them when, and, and don't ask people if it's okay. Look and see if it's okay. So you can look and see. You don't have to ask them, is everything good? Stupidest question on the planet. Look and see if everything is okay. And then when you see it is, reassure them that what they did and the fact that they trusted you with your suggestion was a good idea. And every time they come back, they'll ask for you because they trust you. And they know that you're somebody who's going to recommend the right thing. And you're going to make sure you back it up and follow up with them. Recommendation, recognition, and reassurance are critical. What I try to tell servers and managers is do not treat your servers like a part-time hourly employee. Most of them sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of goods. Give them incentive to sell the big picture. Make your incentives and your promotions year long, month long, not just for one shift. You know, sell the most specials this shift. How about selling the most specials this month? How about the most specials for the year and you go on a vacation? Right. Think about the big picture because a lot of servers make pretty good money. So a 10% increase in their sales could be a, a huge increase from the restaurant standpoint. Well, yeah. Well, 10%, 10% increase there is, uh, I mean, there's... That's an extra, that could easily be, if they're doing $1,000 a shift, that could easily be an extra hundred grand. Well, think about it. If you're, you're making 150 a shift, you're probably doing $1,000 a, a shift, right? 15%. Five nights now you work four or five shifts, you're doing 5,000 a week, 20,000 a month, you know, you're 240,000 a year. Yeah. So if I can increase your sales by 10%, that's, if you want to make more, 10% more in your, in, in more money, you get it. Right. You're talking about, I mean, that's a significant amount of money. You're talking about another $25,000 of sales. And by the way, probably the most profitable sales because your overhead is somewhat fixed. Now you're upselling, yeah. you're extending your selling, right? Remember, your person's favorite place is the last place they had the best time. So you need to make sure that the person you're taking care of, that that's the last, your, your place is the last place they had the best time because that's where they're going to come back. People go back to the best place that they had the best time the last time. Yeah. The, and, and what I, my opinion on this and my, my, my theory on this is that um, even right, going back to what you just said about treating people like, uh, or, or treating, treating frontline staff like they're just part-time workers rather than treating them like they're the face of your brand. And that they are that they are the sales, sales professionals, absolutely. And train them. Spend money on training for the love of God. Bring speakers in. Why not? If you have ten right. servers, you can increase each of their sales by ten percent. That could be another three, four, five hundred thousand sales for the year. Right. It'd be a game changer for you. In no but other most, industry, most managers like don't. It. Most managers don't. In no and other it's a shame. industry. In no other industry. No, this would 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 a manager or an owner or an operator send out their their best salespeople with no information, no training, go follow her, she'll tell you what to do. And your rule of thumb as a manager is look at every customer and may believe they're a food critic. And would you have that server go out to the food critic? If not, then you know you got a problem with some of your servers. But at the end of the day, my problem isn't with my problem is not with bad servers. My problem right. is managers that accept that. 
and refuse to either retrain, refocus or fire those people or incentivize the ones that are really, really good so that the other ones can at least follow that lead. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, true. That's true. This, this, this information comes from, uh, I mean, obviously from your operations uh, experience and, and from what you've taught um, other operators. Um, I mean, you, you opened sports bars with Mickey Mantle for the love of God. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with Mickey and I broke into the sports bar business. I was at the Hard Rock and I was like, man, this would be unbelievable. But I can imagine doing the Hard Rock in sports. And that's what kind of got me into the whole memorabilia thing. I opened up a bunch of sports bars, had a great run, love that business, yeah. love the restaurant business. To this day, I love it. I mean, <laughs> I can go right now and jump into any. I love doing talks when I get an opportunity to go at hotels and restaurants. I love the business because it's so much opportunity. It's so. Every day is different. You know, you could change things up quickly. I, I love that. I mean, I think about how great, what an industry. So oh, I, yeah. I still love that business. The sports bar business was great because it was obviously the restaurants weren't my destination. It was my transportation. Right. And it was an opportunity where I got myself involved with a lot of different athletes and the whole sports community and then I ended up getting into the sports business. So I'm very grateful for the restaurant hospitality business for being the springboard. I've decorated a few sports bars too by day, you know, with this, the Steiner sports name and now yep. collectible exchange, but I'm, I'm very grateful for hospitality and, and enjoy the people. I know how hard they work. It's just that if you're going to work that hard, you got to maximize the opportunity and also realize the effect you have on people. When I ask a server, what you do for a living, a lot of them say, you know, I wait on people and I serve them food. I'm like, no, 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 no. You do so much more. Right. You're the breath of fresh air and, and that person's weak. You're the relief. You're the excitement. You're the thing that people look forward to all week to be able to go out and have that one meal or that one night out. Play a vital role with a lot of people's lives and enjoy that, 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 that entertainment and that fun aspect. You can have, a, uh, you can have an effect on people. Well, and that, again, we talk about the, how, how important in our society hospitality is. I mean, going right back to, to hospitality being a people business. We may have conversations about uh, all the time about, oh, the, the restaurant industry is, is doing this because of uh, technology or because of delivery, and we're all going to go to ghost kitchens and all of this other stuff. People still want to go out and get looked after. It's and if I do go to the ghost kitchen, I still want the person who's delivering me the food to make sure that it's still prepared in a way that's special. Maybe I get a phone call, make sure that what I ordered is good. All those little touches matter. The person who answers the phone now, maybe a much more important aspect, that person's voice, their temperature, their, their, their whole feeling, maybe that becomes the important hire. If the business does go a little that way, which it may, now all of a sudden you gotta start thinking about who's answering the phones. Now you gotta start thinking about who's taking those orders and you gotta start thinking about what that stuff's getting put in. And then the follow up to that. It's a different mindset, but it's important. It's, I'll tell you, it's the right mindset in, in, in my opinion. And that's, that's a missed opportunity. Um, we, and, and, and I love that, that you hammered that at home as well. I had, uh, I had Grant Cardone on the program on Halloween and we had, and he had said exactly. Love the same him. Thing. Love him, man. He's awesome. People are not taking that information that they have. You already have their email, you have their phone number. You have all the information you need to contact these people to remarket, re-invite, and to revisit the experience with them. And what an opportunity when you think about to meet people, network. Sure. I mean, you talk about how hard it is to meet people these days. Whatever you're aspiring to do, you never know who's going to walk into your table tomorrow and could change your life. No. Be your best. Do your best. Be, the, you know. Why not broadcast the real you and you're going to make more money from it anyway. Then you never know who's going to be all of a sudden sitting in front of you that all of a sudden wants to hire you or you can become friends with. You may end up marrying. Who knows? That's a good point. <laughs> and and you're right about who walks in. I mean, many times I've, I've had uh, even when I was a server, I've had people come in and they have become friends and then later on become uh, employers or or have done, I've done business with them later on. It's, uh, you just never know who, who the universe is going to send in to meet you in that place. I mean, it's, uh, and if they, if you're authentic and you know your stuff and you are, you're coming from a place of hospitality, then 
you're in the right mindset and you're in the right way. I agree. I agree. That in, I and I mean, you're, you're, you're a perfect example of, of transferable skills in the hospitality industry. How far can this take you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this serving job. I'm just working in this restaurant for now. What are you learning from this? Well, how far can that take you? Well, it's exhibit A, my friend. <laughs> I know so many, so many people that put their heart into it. If that's so well, it's a beautiful thing about the hospitality business. It's never going away. People got to eat. Um, and there's such a brilliant opportunity to do so much more in this business. I love it. And that's why, you know, when I found you on LinkedIn, I, I was like, I got to talk with this guy. I love this business. And we figured we'd have a good chat. Yo, oh, absolutely. And, and thanks a million for doing it. I mean, I, I, from my heart, thank you so much for, for coming on. I know that you're this week, you're, you're kicking off the new business. You're uh, posted your announcement on, which I reshared on LinkedIn, by the way. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the new businesses. I'm excited. By the way, also, you should do a, a book giveaway. The, the, you got to have balls or the living on purpose. I'll send you a few it. copies if you want to give away a couple copies on your platform. I think if you're a server, you know, either the business playbook or any one of the books will really give you a perspective of how to go sell better, sell more, do more. I love it. Let's do it. Absolutely. Right, cool. Will we'll, this right now, we are live on LinkedIn. We are live on Periscope around the world. We're live on YouTube. Any questions uh, we want to, people are asking or do they not do that? It's on the platform. Any comments? Anybody got anything? I'm happy to answer. If not, no worries, but you never know if anybody had a question. Well, I love going live. I love that. It's fantastic, right? Yeah, I love it. That's a what a, that's amazing. It's just amazing. What, the, what, what we world. can do is there we go. Oh, we're getting lots of com lots of comments for sure. <laughs> I mean, are you, are, are you guys with me? You agree? I mean, are people like feeling like I yeah, mean, why absolutely. make why it's make right. X when you can make Y? Right. I mean, There's one, one comment here. He's right. Nobody cares anymore. We've lost all sense of empathy. You know what? That's a fantastic comment. I, I agree with that for sure. It's so true. Let's go. Yeah. Well, people are, people are enjoying it for sure. Oh, cool. Cool. So all right. anything else? This is, this is a great opportunity. I mean, we've got you, You've got 37,000 followers on LinkedIn. We've got 31 something or other uh, who all get notification to watch this live, which is a lot of fun. Hi, everybody. Uh, let's, let's talk about your business. This is a great opportunity for that as well, since we've got everybody's undivided attention. Well, you know, I built Steiner Sports. It took me about 32 years to figure that out. And it literally started from scratch, 4,000 bucks. You know, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. And a lot of naysayers. Best a lot of people are like, what are you doing? No one's going to buy that stuff. No one cares. Right. I'm like, I care. I like it. But, you know, I've been thinking and, and as evolved and I left, you know, it's tough to leave a, a company that's got your name on it. So I'm not with Steiner anymore. Right. And I'm with, I'm with the collectible exchange.com. But, you know, I was just thinking how I could serve people better. You know, at some point you got to step outside yourself and say, you know, how can I serve the industry that I, I've fallen in love with, that I've been doing what I'm doing, I, I could have do a better job. Right. And most people don't think that way, but I've, I was, I've been thinking that way for about three years, particularly now. And I came up with this idea that a lot of people are just sitting with a lot of stuff that they want to sell. Right. And I wanted to create a platform that people could trade in, trade up, but also if they look for extraordinary, unusual items, instead of pushing what I had, I'd be able to push my customers' stuff to each other. So you'd kind of be able to exchange and swap. I'm a big sneaker collector and I, I buy a lot of sneakers and I love the, uh, you know, StockX, which is a sneaker uh, exchange. And I figured, you know, I want to do something like that, but for collectibles, I want odd stuff. I'm looking for extraordinary stuff and I've got a bunch of stuff I want to sell. And that's how I came up with uh, the collectible exchange. It took me a while to build it, but I'm very excited. And then also on the site, which is really cool. A lot of people have a lot of stuff. And they just don't know what it's worth. And there's a button on the homepage. So you can just take a picture of what you have, click it. And then for, for a small fee, we'll tell you what you have and what it's worth. And that's that, really cool. That's the fantastic. last thing is, is that I wanted people to be able to buy stuff directly from the players. So on the site, players can go and sell their own stuff. And they're verified. So you know who you're dealing with. You know you're dealing right. with Mark Messier. Like right now, we're doing a special, by the way, on Mark Messier. You can buy something right from him. A so signed puck or a photo. The Moose. Yeah. Love, love Mark. 
So, you know, to give you an example, like, so players now can go on there, sell their game used directly to consumers, and you know you're buying it directly from that player. Right. That's my game. Like, I just figured, like, as well as I was doing it, I've done well. I, I just said, you know, Brandon, you can do it better. And, and I tell people all the time, your first idea is not your best idea. Oh, yeah. Don't leave success on the, don't leave success on the table just because you had a little success. Right. You know, if you want to be extraordinary, you got to go way past success. And the way to do that is don't accept some success just because you came up with a good idea. Keep pushing. It's usually right around the corner from that good idea is even a better idea. And I think this new website that I created is really an idea that serves and solves a lot of people out there that are sitting with a lot of stuff, don't know what it is, don't know what it's worth, want to get it authenticated. I'm going to do that for you. At the same time, there are people looking for really cool stuff and now they can do it in a really authentic, safe place. I'm excited, man. I'm out of my mind. I'm pumped. No doubt. Pumped about it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Well, to use all of your contacts and and all of the knowledge that you've gained in building this business, I mean, to 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 just walk away from it would have ju- would have just been uh, a sin. I mean, really. Oh, thank you. To to be able to um, take that and to share it with 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 people as well, to be able to to contact and and buy buy stuff right off of players. That's something else. And, and you, I mean, it, it takes away the, am I going to get ripped off back of the mind type of thing? Am I making a good decision going back exactly. to that? Exactly. All right. Exactly. So it helps people make good decisions. That's fantastic. And, and again, I mean, that's part of the reason why I wanted to have you come on as well and talk about hospitality is to, is to get that information. I mean, we do this show because we want it to be a community information education uh, thing where where yeah. we're learning from people who have been successful in the, in in their their own contribution to the industry, right? If you're a business manager owner out there, stop selling and stop putting all your marbles and focus on your bottom line, and start putting your focus how you can serve people better and how you can make it better for people and how you can make your people better. Because if you can get your people better, you can serve people better. You'd be surprised how all that other stuff is going to take care of itself. But most of your day as a manager, as an owner, you're looking at the bills, you're looking at the bottom line, you're looking at your sales for the day. I rarely see an owner call up the manager and say, how's it, how, how business tonight? Were people happy? Would people really enjoy themselves? No. What's the number? How many covers? How much liquor? How much food? Right. Did people enjoy themselves tonight? Was it, was it a fun night? Were, were, were people really happy with the way we were, with the food we were serving? Like that's the focus. And how do we do a little more? How do we give people a little more so they walk out with even a bigger smile? Like that's got to be, and that's what I'm trying to think of here at Collectible Exchange. Like what else can I do for people to make their life a little more fun, a little easier? Well, uh, I'll tell you something that I enjoy is getting your damn blog. Well, thank you. Hey, where, do you where do you get number one, find time? And number two, I mean, you you have all of these fantastic experiences. I mean, the one that, that sits in my mind is the, is the, uh, the Jay-Z one uh and and going backstage and and all of that and and there's even there's even a a, 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 re, a suggested song to go with the blog always so, I, so- I mean, it's funny i'm not even a really good writer but i i, I tell I, I just feel like I, I got an opportunity to share some of the stories and some of the things i get myself in the middle of and i hope people can learn from it um you know the content is free i, I want people to be able to if i can give them a learning lesson and change somebody's perspective that's a good feeling for me it's very uplifting for me when Mike you know will email me or message me and say you know Brand, i put that little story you told me about the orange juice i put it in play actually and i did that something similar it is what i did i'm like i love that right. so it's, it's fun and uh the blog um i don't know i write them in spurts uh, you know i I'm, I'm constantly in writing thinking because it's also teaching me and pushing me Right. Uh, and I'm learning, I'm learning on, on this stuff myself sometimes. Like sometimes I got to read my own blogs and go, Brandon, get a handle <laughs> on yourself, man. Really, you know, get a grip. Like you need to follow your own advice. And uh, sometimes, you know, I, I have to go back and, and read a couple of my own blogs. It's got to be a good creative outlet for you though. I mean, to be able to do the, yeah. the blogs and get that and get that from, from here to the paper uh, or to the computer. Uh, and same thing with the books. I mean, yeah. I'm half illiterate, man. Written three, three books. Yeah. I'm working on a book now you know, on leadership. 
I'm working on a book now on leadership, which I'll have out for Father's Day. Um, I've written about t- over 2,000 blogs, and then I've got, I think, 250 pods that are from, you know, how to have better sex, to how to eat better, and how to make more money. Everything around the sun, sun, the moon, and stars. I mean, it's all over the place. And I just think it's fascinating to learn. I think most people always concentrate on learning stuff yeah. that they're very, very interested in or that helps them make more money. But I think we all know you got to learn a lot more than that. You got to widen. I was, people say get into your discomfort zone. I'm like, just widen your comfort zone. Yeah. It's, it's better put for me. Like, widen your comfort zone. Just because you don't love something doesn't mean you shouldn't know anything about it. Right. So, I'm trying to, I try, so I've been trying to widen my comfort zone with my posts and my blogs. And it's been, it's actually helped me a lot grow. You know, I, I was kind of getting dummy down with the sports where all of a sudden, if you told me who scored a goal eight years ago in the second period, I'd tell you who it was and who the goaltender was. I'm like, maybe I could lighten up a little on that. Maybe I could learn <laughs> a little bit about politics, religion. And so I try to get myself a little more well-versed. Yeah. It's been I mean, helpful. I love that you are, um, really embracing the the whole technology of it uh, uh, as well i mean we get into we get into this this is this is what i know i don't want to learn more about that um i i started tiktok because wow. gary v said everybody should yeah. try tiktok i watched and i went this yeah. is a little ridiculous then i went back and well, he gary gets gary get you in a million directions oh i know right yeah, he wants, he he wants everybody to be everywhere which yeah. which is fine uh, but he, he basically talked me into, into looking into it because I, I, our platform is LinkedIn. It's where we're successful. It's where, yeah. it's where we communicate. And then, and I thought, you know what, just for fun, I'm going to go and, and get involved in this one thing. But here's my Gary V thing. Okay. And I love Gary. I really do. I mean, I, I, I watch and listen to everything with Gary because I've learned a lot from Gary, but you know, Gary talks a lot about don't expect from your employees to act like. Oh, yeah. Don't expect your employees to act like they own it. You're always going to care more than your employees. Yeah. Don't expect your employees to act anything more than employees because you own the place. You're the head person and they're not. And I just disagree. There is no reason to work anywhere unless you're all in and putting your effort in. You don't know who's sitting next to you, who you're going to be dealing with, and you don't want anybody to see you in anything less than your authentic self. I think the biggest gift in life is being your authentic self and the best version of yourself. Why would you hold back just because you don't have the keys or the combination to the vault? I was a dishwasher. I act like I own the joint. I was washing dishes. I act like I ran that kitchen. And God knows I wasn't, but in my mind I was. I, I think no matter what title you have, you should put your all in and act like you really put every effort into being the best you could be. And, and it's really one of the few things that Gary and I disagree on. I, I just, I don't agree. I don't think that you should be an employee anywhere holding back because when you hold back, it's kind of like having a clogged artery. It's having like a blood clot. And ultimately you'll end up having a heart attack at your job because you're holding back. You want everything to be flowing the, the right way, the natural, authentic way you should. And when you go to work, it should be all in. If you're not getting treated well and you don't think it's a good opportunity to leave. But again, you're your own brand. Every day, people are judging you. People are watching you. People are getting to know you. And you want them to see you at your best. They want you to know you at your best. You want to be your best. And when you start getting these stories in your head about, well, you didn't get a raise. You didn't get a promotion. You're not making enough money. A lot of those stories are sometimes not true. Sometimes they are. But if you do figure out that they're definitely they're true and you're not happy, then leave. Don't short yourself and work days and months at a job that you're not in love with, you're not putting your all effort in. Don't. So I disagree with Gary V on that. And and I, 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 I'm mad enough for putting it out there because it basically sends a message to people to not do their best. And I don't like that. I'm very against that. I think that if you, as a, as a manager and operator, you, you talk that way to your people and you're, you're frank with them and, and you say, you know what, you're, you're here. We want, we hired you because of you, not because we want you to fall in line. We fall, we hired you because we see something in you. We see that fire. Let it burn. I tell my people, I'm looking for partners, but I'll settle for employees. If you act like an owner and a partner, I'll treat you like one. Yeah. If you act like an employer, I'll treat you like a paycheck employee. I think you determine, you dictate your future. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's 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 a fantastic way to look at it. And I think people as employees, that's that's something that that I, I for sure I, I'm, I'm one person who would really uh, respect that. And as a as a as a uh, as an employer, I mean, that's something to hang on to. Write that one down for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all right. It's been fun, man. Hopefully you got some good response. Hopefully for the audience is what you're looking for. And hopefully you're going to have a little better day in your restaurants or your retail establishments, because there's nothing better. Nothing moves me more when I go into a restaurant and I can feel the energy and somebody walks up and I know they really want to take care of me. There's nothing better. It's a yeah. great feeling. Brandon, you know, when I do these, I'm always looking for the nugget, right? I'm always, uh, as I'm always, I'm always looking for that, for that one thing where we, we can, we can take that clip and we can go, you know what, that's the thing, right? That's the thing we want to, that we want to use. I and mean, this has been a, this has been a gold mine. Thank you so much for, for <laughs> well, thank you. You know, taking, taking your time. And especially this week, which is such a big week for you. Um, and for, for, you know, sharing your decade. Hold on, hold on. I got to stop you. That's that. See, that's the mindset that I don't agree with. <laughs> Every week's a big week because if this was a big week for me, what am I saying about the other 51 weeks? Yeah, fair it's enough. Whole thing. This is a big day. Oh, we got a big night. No, no, no. Every night is for me. I, you want to call me Saturday? You're going to get this. You want to call me? My, I really thrive on the consistency. I always say consistency over time equals credibility. I don't have a big day. This every day is a big day. Like, I mean, if I, if I did another pod yesterday, what am I saying about that person? If this is a big day with you, I want you to know you're going to get my best self today because okay. every day is a big day. Yeah. I, I'm starting the uh, collectible exchange today uh, or this week, but yeah, it's important. I'm excited, but you know, um, I don't start getting into big meetings and big days because it's insulting to the other days and to the other meetings. Fair enough. Fair Let enough. That be a nugget. That's it. And that's another one. <laughs> Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon Thank you. Steiner. Thank Catch you. his blog. Follow him on LinkedIn. And uh, we're going to do a, uh, a book giveaway. We will get that sorted out over the phone in the next few minutes. And uh, this has been amazing amazing thank you, thank you i answer all i answer all the messages on linkedin or facebook or whatever so please i love reach out to me tell me we hate tell me you love love hearing from you well this is good this is up now live and it'll continue to stay live cool. uh so you can see the questions and uh brandon can all right cool on yeah. and, and personally answer them for you cool so again have a fantastic rest of your day thank you very much brandon for joining us and uh this has been awesome Thank you. Thank you. Take care.